Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to the conversation. So today, we're going to be talking about my man, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the Los Angeles Lakers. And the question is, will LeBron need to take a back seat to Anthony Davis in order for the Lakers to become real championship contenders? So that's what we're going to be getting into this video. So let me just quickly give you guys a backstory. I'm sure all of you know, but some of the newcomers, they may not know what's happening. Let me just give you guys the rundown. So as you know, the Lakers were able to acquire LeBron James a year ago. We all know this. But last season, there was this big talk about the Lakers trading away some of their younger players like Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, and others to acquire Anthony Davis. Now, there was a whole bunch of stuff happening, and everything came down to the, 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 the trade deadline last year. They tried to pull the trigger. It didn't work out. Everything turned, ended up being a mess. Magic Johnson ended up leaving the organization for a bunch of various reasons that I'm not going to get into in this video. So there seemed to be so much turmoil with the Lakers last season. LeBron got injured. I think he, he was injured for the longest he had ever been in his entire career. People were wondering, you know, are we looking at the decline of LeBron? They didn't make it to the playoffs when he was playing. The games that he did play, the Lakers were under 500. Now, he did put up good points. I think he had 28 points a game, 7 rebounds, 7 assists. So he had good numbers statistically, but those numbers did not translate into wins and that was the bit that was the major issue so going into the offseason there were so many question marks as far as how is LeBron is he going to bounce back this season because some people are critical like Skip Bayless and hey man I don't know how he's going to bounce back when he's busy shooting uh Space Jam 2 I mean is he there for Hollywood or is he there to actually play basketball there were there was that narrative going on out there then other people were like no nah, you know LeBron this is going to give him some time to really rehab rest his body because he's been putting himself under so much stress over all, you know, all these years, going to the finals eight straight times and all these different things. So it turned out that this season, the Lakers were actually able to land Anthony Davis, right? And in a lot of people's minds, Anthony Davis is, you know, probably a top five player in the NBA. Some people have him higher, lower. It all depends on who you're talking to. If you talk to Stephen A. Smith, he has him number three or number four. I don't know where it is. So you know, they acquired Anthony Davis, and it was all of this hype. And immediately, people were like, title contenders, title contenders, title contenders. And since then, they were actually able to acquire a lot of good pieces. They traded away Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, in order to acquire Anthony Davis. They ended up uh, getting um, uh, Danny Green, who, was also, uh, who also played for the championship Toronto Raptors. So they have a good core. They have Rajon Rondo. They picked up Dwight Howard. So they have a really good, uh, you know, um, starting five and a good bench. But going into this season, we all have to sort of address the elephant in the room. Who's going to be the number one option for the Los Angeles Lakers? Now, is it going to, is it going to be that LeBron needs to take a step back for the Lakers to go forward? Well, I think that LeBron needs to become the number two option for the Lakers in order for them to do really, really well in the upcoming season. I'll tell you why. Here's a few reasons. Number one, Anthony Davis is a younger player than LeBron James, so he's able to take on more of the offensive load. He's able to play longer minutes than LeBron. I don't think LeBron needs to be playing above 35 minutes a game. He's going into his 18th season, I believe it is. I think he'll be 35 years old this year, 35 or 36. So he's not getting any younger. And what they need to do is sort of manage his body, manage his minutes, as they make it into the playoffs so they can get the most out of him when the Lakers do get there. Because best believe the Lakers are going to be one of the top four seeds in the Western Conference this year. I believe so. You know, I don't I don't I don't know if they're going to be the you know the number one seed, but I definitely think they're going to be the, one of the top four seeds going into the playoffs this year. So one, the the first benefit is LeBron gets to manage his uh, he gets to manage his body. Number two, with him taking a, a, a you know becoming the number two option as far as scoring at least that allows him to do what he does best, which is facilitate a game. You rarely see LeBron James take over a game with his scoring, although he can do that, but that's not his first go-to sort of, uh, 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 let's say, um, uh, uh, attribute. That's not what he necessarily likes doing. LeBron likes to facilitate the game. He likes to get other people involved. He's not necessarily a score force player, although he can score really good for somebody that's not offensive minded he's more of like a magic johnson although he can score much he can score the ball much better than magic johnson uh, could ever dream of but i think if he you know if the lakers sort of 
you know, move him to the facilitator role and sort of running the offense, then things will work out well because I don't think he has to stress himself on offense. Number two, he's the best point guard in, in, in the whole NBA. I think he's been the best point guard since he came into the league. It's, I mean, it's just, a, it's just a pure reality. LeBron James is able to see the court in a way that no one else really can at his size to be able to look over defenses. Number two, his basketball IQ is out of, the war, out of this world. He's one of the smartest players in the history of basketball. And for the simple fact that he did not go to college, it's really astonishing to think how he develops you know, this basketball mind that he has. There's only a few players that come out of, that come out of high school that are able to have this, to be able to think the game that well. A few that come to mind is, you know, Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and maybe a few others that I'm not, that I'm, that I'm uh, missing right now. So, I think LeBron taking the back seat to AD will really help the Lakers. Now, Anthony Davis, all he did last year was average 28 points, 12 rebounds, and a couple assists and probably, you know, a block or two a game. So he's going to be, you know, fantastic. And AD came out and said that his main focus this year is to win Defensive Player of the Year. Watching a lot of the news, uh, uh, the press releases coming out of Lakers training camp, is that the team is a lot more defensive-minded, uh, especially when you have two anchors in the paint like Anthony Davis and you have the White Howard coming off the bench. So you have really good defensive players as well as Rajon Rondo at the point guard uh, spot. You have Avery Bradley who could pick up a lot of point guards and even two guards. So they have a lot of great defensive players that can sort of hide LeBron because let's just face it, LeBron is not, you know, he's not 25 years old anymore. He's not 27, not 28. He's not even 30. You know, he can't play defense at the level that he used to. And I think it's something normal. Most great, I mean, with the exception of people like maybe Michael Jordan, but, I mean, how many MJs are there out there like that anyway? You can't expect them to be, you know, running up and down the court playing defense at that level. He's too, I mean, he doesn't have the legs anymore. He has to manage his body a little bit better. So LeBron is going to have a lot of help on defense, and I think it makes sense if they make Anthony Davis the focal point of the offense because once they do that, then that allows um, LeBron to just sort of facilitate the game, and I think it's going to work out really well, especially going into the playoffs, because what needs to happen is, remember, LeBron is really handing over the keys to AD. The Lakers, Rob Palenka and these guys, acquired Anthony Davis because they want him to be the face of that franchise going into the future. He's going to be the face of the Los Angeles Lakers, at least if he signs on with them to continue playing with them, and I think a lot of that, is going to be predicated on what happens this season, how they do in the regular season. Are they going to make it to the Western Conference Finals or not? We don't know. So I think a lot of things are yet to be seen, but I do think LeBron needs to take a step back. In order to allow Anthony Davis to flourish, I think it's going to work well for him and for AD, and I think you know it's going to really help the Lakers get where they want to go. So that's my opinion on, on, opinion on the whole matter, and I think that that's what LeBron James needs to do and I, I believe if he does do so he's actually going to help make this team real title contender so what I want to know from you guys is do you think that LeBron needs to take a back seat to Anthony Davis or Anthony Davis is just not there yet and LeBron needs to actually lead this team this year just so Anthony Davis can pick up some real playoff experience because an argument could be made that you know Anthony Davis hasn't had you know an iota if we're going to compare the levels of success that LeBron has had versus in the playoffs versus Anthony Davis, you can't even compare the two. So some people watching this video may be saying, why in the hell would I let Anthony Davis be the number one option, especially going into the playoffs, when he's never been there before? He's never done that. Where, on the other hand, you have a guy that's gone to eight straight finals minus the last one and, you know, has won uh, multiple uh, NBA championships and all of this. So why the hell would I leave it to Anthony Davis to do so? There's a group of people that may say that. And there are others that may say, hey, LeBron is just not old enough. He's not young enough to do so. He's not a spring chicken anymore. So he needs to hand over the reins to somebody else. So that's what I want to know from you guys. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think about this. I really want to know because this is going to be an ongoing narrative all throughout this season. And it's going to be interesting to see how things play out. So leave a comment in the comment section below. I really want to, want to know what you guys think. Again, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed our content and probably some of our other videos, don't forget to check them out. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys a fantastic day. Peace!